Hello friends and fellow gamers, it's MKX Jump here, and in today's video we're going to be checking out the brand new changes that have happened today to the Idle Heroes Blacksmith event. That's right, there's brand new armor that we're going to take a look at and I'm going to work out the values, figure out what's good for you, figure out what's not so good, and hopefully it's going to help you all a lot with how to approach this big brand new update. As well, there's a few things about it I don't like and I always do love ripping a little bit into some content, so let's see if we can put some feedback in DH Games' general direction. As well guys, before I get into today's video, I'd like to tell you about LD Player, which is a emulator I've been using and they reached out to me and were like, hey look, you might be interested in this, we know you use other emulators, but you might want to try out this Android emulator we have. So if you guys are interested, I've been using LD Player as an alternative to the emulator we've normally been using. And I've got a link down below in the description if you guys want to download that and check it out. And every single person that downloads that and tries it out on their PC will actually help me out. So if you use it today and then you use it tomorrow or if you use it whenever you see this video and then use it the day after that as well, it's going to help me out and send a little bit of money my way and you might actually find out about a piece of software which you, uh, you enjoy. So maybe give it a little try. It's an affiliate link, so this isn't like a direct sponsor to this video. It's just something that I've picked up and I think you guys might be interested in and it also helps me out a little bit. So... Why not give it a try? Anyway, enough of that. Let's go check out the blacksmith stuff and the other things for this week's event. Let's go. So the first thing to say about this event is it is a profit orb event. So every day for logging in, we get ourselves a profit orb, which results in seven free profit orbs throughout the week if you log in every single day. So make sure you're claiming that. As well, if we take a look at the cool events, you can see the new Graydor's Blessing is here. We'll take a look at that at the end, so instead, let's take a look at everything else. Value packages are the normal, well, the new normal Profit Orb packages that have been ramped up. So you're going to get 5,000 gems and 50 Profit Orbs if you spend 100 bucks, and this scales down depending on how much you're willing to spend. The Profit Summon event is here, and it seems that they're sticking to completing it eight times, which is a new adjustment they've made, which I'm actually quite positive about, because it means you can get eight copies of whatever hero is available if you save up a ton of Profit Orbs. So actually, I, I kind of like this. The rewards we get this week, we get Shadow Hero, we get a Fortress Hero, you're getting your usual Light and Darks, and for 60, you're going to get yourself an Oberon and a Core of Transcendence, another new feature that it looks like they're sticking with, so I think always now, for doing 60 Profit Orbs, you'll get yourself a Core of Transcendence, and if you get to 80, you're going to get the usual 15 Glorious Relics, and for this week, it is a Rogan. So obviously they're stalling a little bit because they kind of had to delay themselves and don't like giving Light and Dark Heroes away during Profit Orb events, my guess is that next month's Profit Orb event will include Eloise. So if you guys aren't interested in Rogan, or you've got a Rogan, or you don't think he's going to be relevant because you don't need him in PvP because you're facing a lot of forcuses in your local PvP meta, then perhaps sleeping on Rogan and waiting for Eloise in a month's time is something you might want to do. Because I know a lot of people do enjoy using Eloise in PvE game modes, and GDP has said he likes putting a Golden Crown. So if you have a Splendid Golden Crown, you might want to try an Eloise in PvP if you have a Splendid Golden Crown. These are some things to think about of whether you're going to use your orbs now or next month, so just bear that in mind and hopefully that will inform your decision, assuming you didn't use 50 orbs last event. As well, Heroic Miracle is here, so this is an opportunity to summon 5-star heroes and get rewards. You need to summon 2 5-star light heroes, 2 5-star darks, and 3 in every other faction, and you'll get all of the armor here, all of the other stuff, and this is pretty great. Now, because of the new update, the armor is now absolutely crucial. In fact, the brand new update has made tons of things like Shelter Mission, this, uh, Summon Prizes where you get a three-star set of armor if you get the copy of the new hero. All those things are going to be way more beneficial now because of this new update. So stay tuned and I'll talk to you more about that a little later on. As well, if you manage to complete Heroic Miracle, you get yourself a Tara copy. An okay light hero, certainly not the best, but I know some people have managed to do solo seal land clears with Tara. Obviously, it requires imprints and a good artifact, but that's just interesting and worth bearing in mind. Is it worth building Tara? Well, really, it's probably not worth building that many light heroes, to be honest. Light is certainly the weaker faction out of light and dark, and probably one of the weaker factions in the game, which is a scary statement to say, considering light and dark have always originally reigned supreme. So yeah, just worth bearing that in mind that Tara isn't as exciting as something like an Amon Ra or a Carry could be. And this next thing we have is the Moonlight Gift. Basically, throughout this event, you need to spend 2,500 VIP XP's worth of money, so that's basically 50 bucks, and you'll get all of this stuff you see here, as well as the things you purchase. So you're going to get 50k promotion stones, 150 million spirit, 200 million gold. You're going to get this 5-star luxury selection chest, which includes every single 5-star in the game, excluding light and darks, even Eloise is in here, so that's pretty interesting. 
And as well, you're going to get yourself two six-star puppet selection chests. Now, for some people that have a lot of food, this might not be something you're after if you've got a lot of spirit and a lot of gold. Is it really worth spending 50 bucks? Maybe not. However, for a lot of you mid-game players who are really after food and where hero copies are always something you're interested in, spending 50 bucks is actually not a bad idea. There are lots of areas in the game you can spend this 50 bucks in. My recommendation would be, if you haven't already, just to buy 50 bucks worth of senior privilege and normal privilege cards, like I've done in advance in previous events. That's why mine says 153 days on here, for example. But if you cash all that in, um, there'll be things you were going to buy anyway and actually get you some nice free stuff. So that's a little thing to bear in mind if you want to cheese the Moonlight gift and you're only a monthly card spender. So yeah, pretty useful little trick there you can use. Before we look at the blacksmith stuff, I want to talk about next week's event, which is a massive surprise. It's Heroic Summons. I didn't see this one coming. If I did, I would have delayed how soon we started the free-to-play series. But hey, we're off, we've started, we're away. And this is a shocker, like an absolute bombshell of an event that I don't think anyone would have guessed. Heroic Summons for Easter? It's We only had a Heroic Summon event like three weeks ago, or technically two weeks ago, because we have a week of this event to enjoy. What happened to gem boxes? Wishing coins? Is that not happening? Camp like uh, uh, Campaign loot drop? No? Okay, we're going straight into a Heroic Summons event. I mean, it's not unlike DH games to switch things around, so upsetting the status quo is nothing new. But it's just surprising we're getting a brand new hero this soon. The Hero Exchange event is giving Eloise away, which is going to be really interesting, so make sure you save your altar stones for that. Enormous Workshop is back, of course, and Palace of Eternity and Palace of Crystals all coming back, and then there's the Easter Party. So this is going to be something that's probably going to sap us out of either money or gems, gold, all of the above, to get some really cool rewards. So I'm going to be, uh, let's just say, quietly optimistic about what that's going to bring, because I think it's going to be another opportunity for DH Games to give us a free artifact, and to have a free artifact within a space of two weeks, because we got Antlers Cane last week. So this, again, could bring something good. So make sure you hit that subscribe button if you want to catch my review of the Easter Party event next week. Now, as promised, let's take a look at the brand new Grey Dwarf's Blessing. First thing I want to comment on is the interface. I don't think this is the interface they're going to settle on. My guess is DH Games delayed the update because they were trying to finalize the interface. Like if I click here, I'm holding down the mouse button and nothing is happening. There is no animation for my mouse going over. Unlike if I click this question mark, you see the question mark sinks in and then bounces when I come off it. Nothing of the sort happens here. So you have to just hard click it and just assume it works. So that's probably something that's going to get changed. Orange 5-star equipment can still be forged as normal, up to 3 times. 6-star equipment, same again, same price, same everything. And class suits, again, same as usual. The new thing that's been added is resonance suits. And these were alluded to last week. I mentioned that this was probably on the horizon. I didn't realize it was going to be this soon. This pink equipment is an upgraded version of class suits that you can basically get. And you might be thinking, whoa, how do, how do I get this? Where's the button? Because obviously it's here, right? There's obviously an interface and menu here. It's less obvious with this. Super counterintuitive. Again, I don't think they're going to settle on this interface. You have to click the background of the armor you want. This whitey cream colored thing. So if I want the assassin, I have to click that. Makes no sense. I don't think they're going to stick with it. It's really bad interface design. And I think DH Games just rushed this. And I'm pretty certain it's going to be changed by next month. That's me putting words in DH Games' mouth, by the way. They haven't said that. I'm just assuming because it's so counterintuitive. It took us forever to figure out how to buy this. I was clicking on these going like, what, what's this? Like, how, how do I get there? What, what, what? No. Eventually, we realized you have to click the cream background. And also, so you know, to buy this is going to cost you a full set of 6-star armor, a full set of the class that you want, 5,000 gems, and 200 million gold. Now that does sound expensive, but I want you to put it into the perspective of this has just come out. Like the release of E3 or E5 or Void Imprints. It's not something a lot of people are going to be able to get straight away, and that's fine. Think of it from another person's perspective who's just started the game you only pick up armor at the rate you build E5s. So free-to-play players will only need one set of this probably once every two months. For other people out there, let's say you're a mid-spender and you can build an E5 every month, then sure, okay, maybe at some rate you are going to be picking up these items once a month. But that's fine. What 5,000 gems and 200 million gold is manageable once a month. The only issue is you also need to pick up the class suit 
which is another 4,000 gems and 100 million gold. So for a total to go from six star gear all the way up to a resonance suit, it's going to cost you 9,000 gems and 300 million gold. But once you've got it, you've got it. You never need to buy that again. However, there is one small catch with this armor. Now, it upgrades your stats. It upgrades all the things that it previously gave. HP here, for example, on the boots. You've got the HP, the speed stats there. But they've added a new feature, which is called the Resonance Hero Enchantment. And this is specific to a hero that you have. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to purchase a set of armor. We're going to go with Mage Gear, just so I can show you how this works. So let's go take the Mage Gear from my Void 4 ticks. So I'm going to yoink that. Then we're going to go back across to the Grey Doors Blessing. We're going to press Forge. And then we're going to go to the Resonance Suit menu. Now let's click the Weaver's Suit. And you'll see I have everything I need. I don't have that many gems, but I'm going to spend it for you guys. So let's go. Let's forge up ourselves a set. Kablam. There we have it. And now I have a full set of Resonance Mage Gear. Brilliant. So let's go back now. And let me show you what this armor does. Best way I can show you this is actually in the blacksmith. Funnily enough, this little hut that's been neglected for eons is finally going to be useful. So let's click on the blacksmith and you'll see there's three new menus. First one is forge, which has always been there, which is where you can spend gold to merge armor together to make better armor. You have the disassemble equipment menu. This is a game changer. We'll talk about this in a second. But hero resonance... This is the big thing that I want to say. So, as you can see, this item here that I have, which is my weapon, is linked to Starlight. And it can be linked to any hero that fits the class and is a 5-star. So, unfortunately, there's a lot of bad heroes this could attach to. Aiden, Bleaker, OD, Flamestrike, Margaret. You get the idea. There's a lot of heroes that you don't want it to equip to, which is a bit of a pain, but it adds to some RNG, I suppose. Now, what you can do is select the hero you want. So, let's say it's Tix. And I can spend gems as well as this currency down here. And it's going to increase the chance that it switches it to ticks. Because every time you convert it, it will re-roll and give you a new character. Spending gems makes the likelihood that you get the hero you selected higher. For it to be guaranteed, you have to do it six times. So it could cost you as much as 3,000 gems. And that's just for one piece of armor. So for a full set of armor, that's 12,000 gems before you've even considered the 5,000 gems you need to spend to get it. And instantly, I know a lot of you, just on the sound of that, your stomachs are churning thinking, oh god, DH Games, why would you do that to us? And I was the exact same when I heard this. However, you can just convert as normal, but it has an equal chance of it giving any hero on this list. And it costs you a million of these crystals, just like it would, but without the 500 gems, to swap there. So how do you get these crystals? Are they going to be really hard to get your hands on? Well, no. Surprisingly not. See this three-star gear we have here? Just by putting in one copy of that, it's going to give me 4.7 million. And I have 28 in there. And that's just for weapons. If I go to my chest pieces, I have another 29 here. For the necklaces, that's another 20 I've got. For boots, another 21. And that's just 3-star orange gear. And if you really wanted to spend 4-star orange gear, that gives 14 million a time, which is 4 opportunities to respin on your piece of armor. Now, is that worth it? You might think immediately, of course it is. That's 14 million. That's amazing. But bear in mind, it's very difficult to get 5-star armor and 6-star armor. Or is it? Remember that guild update that came out a while ago? Now it looks completely different. So does the store. You can buy armor from the store. So if you need a bunch of these crystals, you can just spend your hard-earned thingamabobs, these things, I don't know what they're called. You can spend them in the guild store to get armor. And a lot of the stuff in this guild store seems pretty cool, but the limits are quite low and really there's easier ways to get copies of heroes. And especially once you've got the heroes, do you really need to be picking up more? Well, yeah, sure. Grabbing another Sherlock or Ticks might be cool for some people. But people that are worried about grabbing armor, it's actually quite cheap. 7,200 of these coins is going to pick you up Courageous Armor, for example, which is your four-star armor. And that's going to get you 14 million crystals. However, for three times the price, you can get five-star gear. Now, let me just show you how much 5-star gear can get you in the disassemble equipment. One single piece of 5-star gear gets you 43 
million. That's actually a little tiny, tiny bit better. In fact, I would go so far as to say it's probably the same after rounding. So, you guys can buy a lot of stuff from the guild store to get all these crystals, if you were so inclined, and if you didn't have the armor already. But I already do have the armor, so I'm going to go and disassemble a ton of this stuff. We're just going to go with the three-star gear, because there's no reason to have three-star gear. And look, that, there you go, 133 million. Yeah, I, I'm going to disassemble that. Yep, Ch cheers. Yeah, thanks. And we're going to do it for the chest pieces. Oh, nope, not my four stars, but there you go. 29 of these. Thank you very much. Another 138 million. And do bear in mind, this has been accumulated over three years of playing. I'm aware a lot of you probably don't have this much three-star gear. But I'm trying to show you just how ridiculous this number is. Because I'm going to walk out of this just by using my three-star orange gear with 468 million. That's 468 chances to get the heroes I want from this. And bear in mind, there's only that many mages in the game. I think I'm going to be fine. So let's try and reset this for ticks. First roll gets me a Jara. Okay, I'm going to cancel. And it's just like stones, right? Let's convert again. Sherlock, pretty cool. But again, don't need it. I want to go all in for a ticks. And see, it's hardly using these crystals. It uses a million at a time. I don't know why anyone would spend 500 gems. Because there is a button right next to it, which I've realized I'm in the way of for this entire video, because I'm a Muppet. So if I lift my camera up, you'll have a much better, clearer sight. See see where it says Resonance Conversion down there? Yeah, that button's free. Doesn't cost anything. So, uh, yeah, let's let's convert again. So here we go. And eventually, ticks will pop up. Margaret, no, I'm good. Ada, pretty cool, but no, I'm fine. And sure enough, if you keep trying... I promise, ticks will show up. Jara's come up for a second time, that's fun. Now, one thing we don't know is the odds of all these heroes showing up. So my guess is that it's equal across all the heroes. It might not be. So I think it's going to require a data mine or something to find out the odds. But I think it's a bit scummy if it's not equal, because they should tell us that. But there's nothing anywhere that says it isn't equal... And I think they have to disclaim probabilities of things. So eventually the hero you want will show up. For example, there we go. Ticks. Perfect. Thank you very much. Now my weapon is attuned to Ticks. Which means Ticks, when he's using this weapon, will get plus 6% all damage dealt on top of the other bonuses. Now let's go to this chess piece. Let's do the exact same thing. Resonant Convert. Eventually, Ticks will pop up. And just for the funsies of it, I'm going to put Ticks in the corner just because it may increase the odds. I mean, it doesn't, I'll be honest, but... You know, it's, it's, it's nice to try. And hang on a second, did we have a Jara and it gave us a Jara? Am I, am I going crazy? Was that a thing? If it can give us the same hero, that's really scuffed. But I hope it's uh, not the case. There you go, there's a Tix. Fine. And we've only used 16 million, I think, of our crystals so far. Hardly, hardly any at all compared to how many I had. So let's go now to this, again, Flame Strikes here. So let's just convert this until Tix shows up. Aiden, no thanks. And the only thing that's going to be annoying is just how long it takes to do this. But eventually, the hero we want will come up. Mim, pretty cool. I think that's the first time Mim's popped up, actually. But I will put Tix in here, just because I want him to show up. Oh, there you go. Magic. And that's another 8% HP that Tix will get when he's wearing this item. And finally, finally, guys, we got one more piece to do. It's the boots. And that's going to give Tix plus 10 speed. Now, that's something I'm going to talk about. The fact that this gives speed is kind of scary because it means that in PvP, having this armor is going to be crucial to make your hero the fastest there is. That's why I'm giving it to my Tix because he's Void 4 and I want to make sure that he is the fastest compared to any other Void 4 Tix that could be on the battlefield because Tix is my pretty much creme de la creme, the best hero that I have on my PvP team. But do you guys need to worry? Is this going to be something you're going to feel in a PvP meta? Well, this new update isn't really going to affect you that much in PvP. Because there's so many other things that are all over the place. For example, in the Galactic Tree, a lot of people will have Star Spawns. I don't, because I use Anosuke Cheese, and Star Spawns interfere with your cheesiness in the Void. But for those of you that do have Star Spawns, they're going to affect your stats. For example, this little fella down here gives a little bit of HP and a little bit of attack. But once you upgrade him, will increase your all damage dealt. 
So when people upgrade their star spawns, they're going to give more stats to their heroes, just like these armor are going to give more stats to their heroes. Also, it's not equal how many stellar shards people have. So if you look here, I have Void 4 ticks, Void 2 ticks, Void 3 Halora, E1 Russell, E1 Carry, E1 Carry. That's a lot of heroes that are all over the place. None of them are maxed. So again, that's going to give different stat bonuses to my heroes. So it's this same problem that I think is happening in the PvP meta right now, which is that everyone's all over the place. No one has really hit endgame unless they've spent thousands and thousands and thousands on cores of transcendence. And a lot again to upgrade the eggs, to get the star spawns going. And those people, sure, they're going to get this armor on day one, but you don't need to. And I wouldn't worry, this armor isn't going to break the game. In fact, the fact that I've just been able to pick up an entire set and not spend more than the bare minimum amount of gems to attune it all to ticks and still have 440 million of these crystals left over should show you guys that actually for a lot of established players, this is fine. If you're not already an established player, you can pick up armor easily and disassemble it. Bear in mind, if I disassembled all the armor I have lying around, that's probably going to be a thousand million or a billion for those of you that speak maths. So there's lots of ways that this is going to be beneficial to you, and I don't think it's a setback at all. Go and chase this down for the hero that you want and the heroes that you want to attune it to. And I think the only problem is going to be for people who have a lot of E5 heroes and like moving their armor around. Because you can only pick up three sets of this now, and it's expensive technically to attune it to a bunch of heroes so if you have an assassin set you have to choose which bits are going to be attuned to your sword flash and which bits are going to be attuned to your ithaqua now the ithaqua is going to be great in pve but she's not going to be very good in pvp so for pvp sword flash is going to want to have the attunements on her for pve you're going to want to switch them around now this is a question you're going to have to ask yourself do you want to be swapping around which hero is attached to this armor every single time not really that doesn't sound like fun so i think one thing that people are going to eventually have to do is pick up specific sets of armor for specific heroes and it is going to be a real pain it's going to be so problematic another thing we're going to have to weigh up is whether it's better to have a full set of armor that's resonance on your hero or it's still okay to split your armor like we've been doing in the past two and two split three and one split so we'll probably work that out with further testing in the future, although I can actually try this right now with my ticks. So let's see what's going to give ticks the better attack stats. So if I give him the full resonance gear, and for argument's sake, let's keep him with this golden crown, let's take a look at what that does to his attack stat. He is now on 253,725. Now, if I go and do the usual thing we would do if we wanted to go three and one split, let's see if this gives better armor. So we're going to put 6-star gear here, 6-star gear there. I'm going to put this down. If I can go find another piece of 6-star gear, I'm going to yoink it off Sherlock. And I'm going to put this on. Now, is this going to give him a higher attack stat? Hardly. All right, look at that. 260,000 as opposed to this. 253,000. It is close. In fact, the difference is negligible because what he's gaining is all damage reduction, HP, and speed. But then again, in many game modes, damage reduction, HP, and speed aren't really going to make that much of a difference. Then again, he does get plus 10% skill damage from this, and he is getting plus 10% precision, things he wouldn't be getting from the 6-star armor. So I think, for once, finally... The difference is negligible, but because it's negligible, it means you can probably still get away with doing a three-in-one split and not feel the pain. So you don't need to have tons of these. And if this was the case, if all I wanted on ticks was three-in-one split, I would only attune this piece to ticks, which means I could then use the other three pieces on different heroes. So let's just say I go to this ticks, I can then build him with a three-in-one split with, let's say, the Weaver's Necklace on the bottom. And then, for a Sherlock, for example, if I wanted to build him two and two, I could give him the two armor pieces there, and then two six-star pieces there. Is it optimal? Yeah, I suppose. I guess if you tune it nicely, it's great. And considering there's only three resonance sets you can pick up this event, if you did go and go crazy, because the limit is three, then yeah, sure, that's probably still how we're going to have to be equipping our armor. But I think eventually people are just going to try and have full resonance sets for all their major heroes, and that's scary 
for lots of people who have an account like mine where you have a ton of E5s. I really don't want to be picking up full resonance sets for all my E5s. And if you consider that to maximize the Void Arc, you want 15 E5s, 15 sets of resonance armor is a lot of sets of resonance armor. In fact, if you were buying them every single opportunity you had, you would have to wait five months to pick up 15 full sets of resonance armor. So it's going to be a slow burn. It's going to take its time. And I think I wouldn't worry so much about tuning to heroes because that's not going to cost as much as it's going to cost you in time to get all the armor you need. So my friends, do you need to go spend gems to refresh the hero on your resonance armor? No, you can do it with these crystals just fine. If you're short on crystals, go to the guild. And this update, all in all, is pretty cool. It's about time, just for my OCD, I can finally have all pink things on his equipment menu. And that alone makes me happy. So there you have it, guys. That's the event and the new event and the look at next week's event. And yeah, let me know what you think. There's a lot of cool stuff here. I like the blacksmith event, actually. I'll be honest. I think it's a good update to the game. I think it's a nice change. And I don't think it's too out of reach for players. Because at the end of the day, the amount of E5s you have that you need to give this fancy armor to is proportional to the amount of money you spend on the game. So if you don't spend very much money, you don't need much of this armor. If you spend a lot of money, you do need a lot of this armor. And once you've got it, you've got it. So it's great. I think it's a perfectly balanced and fine update. All in all, though, I think the big excitement is going to be waiting to see what Easter brings next week. So be sure to hit the subscribe button to catch that in the future. And as always, guys, if you want to catch my content live, why don't you join us over at twitch.tv forward slash mkxjump. And don't forget, if you wanted to try out the emulator that I've started using, you can find a link for that down below in the description. Until next time, guys, I wish you all the best and happy idling.